Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The word of God I would lay on your hearts this morning comes from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 25 to 40, as follows. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So far the holy word. Dear friends in Christ, fellow redeemed, first of all, uh, bring you greetings from all your saints and fellow believers there in uh, St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church of Clark's, Clarkston, Washington, and also Peace Lutheran Church of Orofino, Idaho. All of us have been preparing our hearts for the last five weeks, really, four weeks of Advent, right, to find the real meaning of Christmas. And by faith, of course, we know what that is. It's Christ. It's the first word of Christmas. It's doing what we've always done as believers led by the Holy Spirit. We keep Christ in Christmas. And we know that looking into his powerful word and meditating upon it and going over those things that lead up to the wonderful event of the first appearing of our Messiah, Jesus Christ, that's what prepares our hearts. That's what, that's how the Holy Spirit gets us ready for the real meaning of Christmas. We don't always get Sundays after Christmas in the church here like we do today. Sometimes it goes right into the epiphany season. This year we get a Sunday after Christmas. And it's uh, typically a Sunday where we speak of these very verses. We In the historic pericope, the historic list of sermons after the the uh, day of Christmas, the festival of Christmas, this is the one where Mary and Joseph bring that child Jesus to begin his life of keeping God's law. You see, eight days after any Jewish boy was born, they were required by Jewish law to take him to the temple to be circumcised. And that's what we're reading about here. And as we read in these verses of uh, the wondering of Mary and Martha, or Joseph and Mary, when we read of the the wonder, the uh, awesome things that uh, Simeon and Anna did to prepare themselves, we concentrate on the truth that this is all about the Christ child, and this is all about God's work of grace and salvation for all people, not just for the many, the rising and the falling in Jerusalem, but also for all nations of which you and I are a part, non-Jews that we are. 
So our theme this morning is Holy Spirit, lead us in faith. Lead us to marvel over Christmas, just like Joseph and Mary. Lead us to live and confess Christmas, like Simeon and Anna. Luke 2. Many of you probably had memorized it when you were a child, standing up there in front of church and reciting it to the congregation. And it came to pass in those days, right, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. It's a wonderful thing to have that in your memory or to be able to open your Bibles and to read it again and to be led by the Spirit to the greatest gift of all, God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Luke 2, 1 to 20. But here, Luke 2, we have 25 to 40. Things that, uh, verses that the Holy Spirit will use to lead our hearts to continue that wonderful uh, meditation and pouring over and pondering and, and reflecting on the greatest gift of all, of all time, God's Son to us, of Jesus. And so we have the words in verse 25, Behold. Behold is like, see, look, check this out. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. We marvel over what Simeon said. We sing it every time we have communion, right, during communion services. For you here, it's first and second Sunday of each month. Uh, right after communion, you sing the, you sing the Nook Dimittis, the uh, O Lord, let us thou thy servant depart in peace. Um, I tell you the truth, I'm not too familiar with the with the supplement worship service for communion. We pretty much stick to page 15. I think there's a version of it, isn't there, right? The supplement. <laughs> Thank you. But it's that, it's those wonderful words of Simeon who'd been promised by God, by the Holy Spirit. And, and you'll notice in the first couple of verses here that the Spirit is mentioned three times in quick succession. The Holy Spirit was upon him, end of verse 25. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit he wouldn't, that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. You know the word Christ. The, the definition means the anointed one, the one whom God in grace and love and eternity had anointed and appointed to be our Savior from sin. What a thrill for this man. Was today the day that he would see the Lord's anointed? Well, he had been told that he would not die until it happened. And then verse 27, so he came by the Spirit into the temple. The Spirit was guiding this man, just like the Spirit is leading us today through Jesus' powerful words recorded here in Luke 2 to marvel over Christmas like Mary and Joseph. We're going to talk about Mary and Joseph. We're going to talk about Anna and Simeon. But you know they're not the central figure in these verses. You know who it is. It's the real meaning of Christmas. It's Christ. Christ is the center of these verses. Uh, just like your bulletin cover says in verse 40, sums it up. The child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. That grace of God, you know, that's not a different word for God's own son, Jesus Christ, that's used for It's the same word that's used for you. That's God's undeserved love, steadfast kindness and mercy. That was upon Christ. That's the same grace that God pours on you in giving you his son, Jesus. Because being born wasn't the only thing that Jesus did, like, like we said. And, and, uh, and like Simeon goes through the life of Jesus and what, he would, what would happen. That he would be a, a, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles, someone who was prepared before the face of all people, the glory of your people Israel. Jesus is the one who was promised from of old. He's the one whom God told Abraham and all those patriarchs, in you and in your seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. That blessing, we're part of all those farther off nations, those non-Jews that would benefit from the blessing of the Messiah. Because we know that it wasn't just being born. It wasn't just the celebration of Jesus' birth that Simeon was rejoicing over. It was what that Savior came to do. Because Jesus would save us from our sins. And he did. And that's why whenever we celebrate Christmas, it's always a little tempered, isn't it? It's tempered with the truth that 
in that manger is a cross. Because Jesus was sent here under the law to redeem those, to buy those back who were under the law. And that's you and I and every other human being who's ever lived and ever will live. That's why he was sent here, to buy us back from our sins. And the way to do that was with his holy, precious blood and his innocent sufferings and death. He would do that. This child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Sometimes when you hear that word many, it's good to put the word the in front of it. The many in Israel. It's just like uh, in Romans when you read, Through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, for all have sinned. That's, that's pretty easy to understand. But when it talks about the many, oftentimes we don't understand that it's talking about all of mankind from beginning to end. Jesus came here as the one and only Savior for the many, for the fall and rising of the many, not only in Israel, but of the entire world. Because we know he's the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way than Jesus to get to heaven. And that's what Simeon knew. And he's telling this, he's saying it out loud, the glory of your people Israel, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. And Joseph and his mother, verse 33, Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. You remember Mary? She hasn't stopped marveling. She, she wondered at those things. She marveled at what was told, them, told her by the shepherds. Imagine what it was like raising a child who never sinned, continually to marvel over, wow, this is the Son of God, marveling over. And, and of course, Mary was a sinner, just like you and I are still have our sinful natures. She probably had doubts at times. That one time when Jesus was 12, didn't go back with the family on their way back after worshiping in Jerusalem. Where have you been? <laughs> and Jesus' answer wasn't, wasn't sinful. It was just, didn't you know I must be about my father's business? But there were probably times that Mary thought, it could, is this truly the son of God? But of course, Again and again, uh, the Word of God uh, and the Holy Spirit working through that Word led Mary by faith, just as she, or the Holy Spirit led Joseph and Mary to wonder and to marvel over the things that Simeon was saying. Uh, we too uh, continue that real meaning of Christmas in our heart, not just Christmas Day, not the Sunday after, but all of our lives long, because the Holy Spirit is leading us in faith. Simeon was so happy to see the Messiah that he said, Lord, now I can die in peace. Now you can, now you can let me go. You know, we too have that wonderful promise that whenever death looms, we get to die in peace <clears throat> because we've seen the Lord by faith. We have the ironclad, rock-solid Word of God that because Jesus lives, we will live also. We have that guarantee that, that passes our understanding that we'll never die because of what our Savior has done for us. Let me now die in peace, and we will die in peace, won't we? By faith, led by the Spirit, according to God's Word, because the Word is the Word of truth. Simeon got to say, my eyes have seen my salvation. We actually get to say it too every time we go to communion. The real presence of Christ's body and blood given for us Christians to eat and to drink under the bread and wine. We get to see the real body and blood of our Savior Jesus. That's why we sing that on communion Sundays. It's been prepared for us, for all the world to see that Savior Jesus Christ. We get to continue to marvel and to wonder about how he is the answer to all of our problems, every tribulation that comes our way in life. He's the answer to our sin problems. He's the answer to our grief problems, to our, our pain we go through. He's the answer to all the doubts and frustrations that we experience because of our sinful nature. He's the answer to all of our sins. He's the light that lightens those who sit in darkness, as prophesied by the Old Testament prophets. Isaiah 49. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth, to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. And I'm struck by the 
last sentence of our Old Testament reading this morning. Like livestock that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. That's really close to the theme of our sermon in these verses this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is leading us, and we're praying, Holy Spirit, lead us in faith to continue marveling over Christmas like Joseph and Mary, but also to live and com confess Christmas like Simeon and Anna. Imagine that promise to Simeon. Each morning must have brought new anticipation. Is today the day? Imagine the promise we have, that Jesus says he, I, that I will come again. And will, I'll come just, and the angels gave that promise, that you will see him come as he went on clouds of glory. Is today the day? Well, the anticipation and the marveling of God's promise works in our hearts because we're led by the Spirit. It could be today, and we would welcome it. We wouldn't run away frightened. We'd be lifting our heads with joy and gladness, knowing that uh, the Lord is coming to take us to be with him forever. Anna was another beautiful believer. She was continually in the temple, our text says. She was uh, in church for long periods of time. Uh, in our bulletin, uh, in Clarkston anyway, we have a welcome to visitors. You know, you get visitors and you welcome them. You want to make them feel welcome. And you, one of the things we always say is, we, if you're looking for a church home, we hope you found it with us. <laughs> and we do. But this lady, church was her home. She was continually in the temple for long periods of time. In fact, it says that uh, she was an older person. She had been with a husband for seven years from her virginity. So what, got married when she was 20, 21, something like that. And then it says she was a widow for 84 years. So doing the math there, she was at least 105 years old. Wow, continually in the temple, always confessing Christ, always. It says she was a prophetess here. And what that means is that she was, she always used God's word to encourage each other. You know, under that definition, we've got plenty of prophetesses here this morning, too. People who use God's word to encourage their spouses, their friends, to steer them towards the promises that never fail from God's word. Let's try to do that ourselves. And we do, because we're led by the Spirit, just like Anna was led by the Spirit. She was there for 84 years encouraging people. Do you know people like that? Like certain pillars of your this congregation or maybe a former congregation you're in, people who have always seen, they're always there. They're always using God's word to encourage and build up people. You know, you have that ability. You have that power. Oh, you may not be outspoken like Anna, who was always going around telling people, to look for the promised one, look for the Christ. He's coming, serving God in his temple. Maybe you have other talents and abilities that the Lord's given you, but led by the Spirit, He'll bring those out for you. He'll show you how to use your lives as God's own dear children to his glory. Because that's what it's all about. We don't praise Anna because she was doing those things. We praise God for using Anna. 84 years since she became a widow. Encouraging people with God's word. And she came in at that moment into the temple. Blessed by the Lord. To be able to see the Lord's Christ, to hear the words of Simeon, that this is the one whom we've been waiting for. And what did she do? She spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. You know, we all always talk about church fellowship and what a precious gift it is of the unity of believers who believe the same thing. And it is, it is a great thing to be able to come in here and know that, you know, your guest preacher isn't going to be preaching something that you don't like because it doesn't go with God's word. That happens in a lot of mainline churches today. You can be confident because we believe, teach, and confess, practice the same thing in God's word. That's church fellowship. Anna had church fellowship, genuine church fellowship with like-minded believers. She knew who those people were. And she knew that they weren't there to see what she saw, to hear what she heard from Simeon who was filled with the Spirit and spoke by his words and is recorded for us so that we, can, we too can be led by the Spirit. Anna went out and told all those fellow believers, this is the Christ. He's born. 
the long-awaited uh, gift from God is here. She went out and told everyone who was looking for redemption and in Jerusalem. You and I get to do the same thing. Serving God with proclaiming God's word, using the power of prayer like Anna did. She fasted and prayed and, and the Lord heard her prayers just like the Lord hears your prayers and my prayers and always answers them. Because we too are led by the Holy Spirit, not only to marvel at the word of God but and, and the gift of Christ at Christmas, but to confess Christ at Christmas, just like Simeon and Anna. What a life of confession. She spoke of him to all those who were looking. The real meaning of Christmas We've got it, don't we? Because the Holy Spirit has worked in our hearts through his word. And he won't stop working in your heart with his powerful word. He'll use you like he did Simeon and Anna. He'll bless you like he did them and Joseph and Mary. I marveled over this gift, this wondrous gift of love from God to man, the gift of Christ at Christmas. Because we know in him is our redemption and our life everlasting. That's the real meaning of Christmas. Amen.